Hey, welcome back, Curtis, that Turbo Dakota. So this weekend, I am working on wiring the truck from the cab backwards. Really just some accessories. I gotta run a four gauge wire up front to that MSD solid state relay block. Everything in the nose of the truck's done. I can almost fire it. As soon as we give injector power, it'll be ready to start uh, You know, for the first time. I am gonna pop a hole in the sheet metal of the truck. I do have some things right here. They're called, they're made by Earl's, so they're called sealets. I've seen a lot of people use them, nothing but good things to say. They're nice because they keep your wiring from chafing through your sheet metal. They're about 38 bucks a piece. I, f I think I got them just from Summit. I'm sure, you know, Summit Jigs all over the internet. They come one to a package, so I got two. So what we'll do is we'll drill a hole in the body of the truck to run the harness down through. The reason why I got two is I'm going to sandwich them between the sheet metal so the wiring doesn't chafe because, you know, whole saw sharp edge, thin metal, just not a good combination for wiring. But it's pretty cool. You cut the rubber out in the center. You want to cut it a little bit smaller so your harness fits tight. Just because, you know, just makes a tighter seal for weather, sound, you know, all that good stuff. They also, if you look at them, and I'll clock them just the right way, they've got holes pre-drilled in them. So we'll just put pop rivets through them. So I'm excited about that. Um, you know, everything in the nose of the truck's done. We could probably uh, start it this week, and I'm hoping to have it moving under its own power. But we'll see. So let's get after it. Okay, here's what we got. Mounted the digital dash yesterday. So it came out okay. Had to trim the bezel. There's a plastic piece down here that I had to trim back a little bit. It's all right. Um, I did it, you know, I took some 90 degree L-shaped brackets and bolted it to the back of it and then used the factory holes to bolt it in there. Um, <clears throat> I might change that down the road. That was probably the fastest thing to do without having to actually like build and TIG weld out some kind of bracket. You see, had a little bit of metal sat out there. Show you guys. So when I say brackets, basically something like that. These, I bought three different sizes. I think the ones I ended up using were like two inch by two inch squared. Um, the screen mounting is wider than the actual gauge cluster. So basically I, I bolted those in. So they faced inside, so they kind of pointed at each other. And then again, you know, bolted one side to the screen and then the other side to the uh, the truck, if you're curious, and if some people, some people weren't. So, you know, it came out okay. Um, it's fairly center. I might end up changing that down the road but, you know, if, if you want to try to put a dash like this in your Dakota, probably the easiest way to do it, to be honest with you. Another thing I did is put in Aurora's grommet. It's got it popped in, ready to go. So, at this point, we got to run some wires. Wiring for the screen, power, and ground, and all that stuff down through here. I've got to, I'm going to relocate the power wire. i got to run our four gauge that feeds our Holly style seat relay block up to the front what else do i have to do oh something i haven't talked about in this box from napa how am i going to make the charging system work so as you can tell factory alternator in there what i'm gonna do or what i'm gonna try to do at least old school style voltage regulator um bolt it to something or put a ground strap put it somewhere I'm gonna hide it somewhere and then I'll use the factory two wire connector on the alternator and I also got the wiring connector with that so we'll lay that there get back down here in my box bucket so this is just the connector I don't know how well this is gonna work sorry it's kind of hard to do this with one hand. So that's just the connector for it, right there. If you're curious on a part number, that's for the connector from Napa. That's for the voltage regulator. Basically, and I'll show you guys, actually I can draw up a wine diagram to show you what I'm gonna do. So we'll see if it works. Um, some people say it works, some people don't. I know sometimes Dodge has these weird overcharging 
under charging conditions with the factory PCM. Typically, that's only if you've got a bad wire connection. Because I actually fought that for a little while and figured it out and have a pretty good understanding of how that works with your factory PCM. But anyway, uh, the, you see the comments guys do that. A lot of people, you know, if you don't want to replace a PCM, it's easier to spend $50 in parts. <laughs> is basically all this is and, and wire it up and just have it work so we'll get into that later too but um i'm just gonna start running wire what can i say okay update time wires from dash or everything's tied back down through here and then we're going towards the back of the truck so i've kind of got actually pulled the fuel tank out so over there, if you can see it, that way I can get behind the frame rail and kind of tidy everything up. While I'm doing all this, I actually wanted to change out the transmission cooler lines. I did have push lock from Summit. And let me show you what I did with it. Walk over here for a second. And it's in the trash because it's garbage. Don't buy it. Trust me, trust me on that one. So anyway, I didn't have enough. I had AN line. Uh, Russell stuff right there in that box. I only had 20 feet. I uh, pulled the old stuff out and measured it, said to order more. At the same time, I'm going to actually add a second trans cooler. Uh, the one that was in there worked pretty good. It was just like right on the edge of getting kind of hotter than I wanted it to. Um, I know in a previous video I showed you guys that, but it's up there. I don't have anything in the nose of the truck, so all I have is that. Uh, that cooler with a built-in fan. So I actually ordered another one. They're the 25, I think, row versions. They do make a 40 row. So if I could have done it all over again, I would have done, uh, would have gotten the 40 row instead. But it is what it is. So turn the light on so you guys can see. But it's right there. I actually made a uh, air scoop for that. But anyway, so. You know, I've got this stuff laid out here. i got to run it over the battery. I'm waiting on more AN lines. So I can't put the fuel tank in yet. So what I'm doing right now is I'm working on the couple accessories for the wires for the dome control. i got to run down through here. Um, what else? So we got dome. We've got our trigger wire for the trans fan. I also have the wiring for the trans braking stuff that I have to go from the transmission up through here back over there on that side so we get that rolling. I did mount that relay. You can see it right there. So we're bumping along. Um, you know, so far so good. It just takes a bunch of time, you know, and I'd rather do it right the first time and not have to do it again. So that's why I went to all you know, the trouble of pulling the tank out. I'm going to order the right line, a little bit more of that braided stainless line. So Again, just a quick update, uh, getting it done. First, I'll show you. Pretty much got everything done. The only other connections, you can see everything's going through the floor, through that bulkhead. And I'll take you guys, we'll get down here real quick, and I'll let you see how I got my stuff tied into the frame rail. Excuse the mess. And it's dark under here. Okay, so wiring. So right here from the cab, set of wires for the ECU, a set of wires for the uh, dash, and then I've got a single wire, which is going to be the from the ECU to the trans coolers that we're going to put in. And then you can see I pulled the fuel tank out, and I said that before. I still got to finish tidying this stuff up, but you can see down the frame rail. I get everything kind of tidied up pretty nice like I want it. Now, eventually, it's getting a fuel cell, so, you know, this space will be open anyway. Um, you can see right there, the stuff comes out of the body. I got stuff running forward. I got stuff running back. So that's just kind of what I've been working on. Um, you know, nobody wants to watch me zip tie and straighten up wires. It's kind of boring. Not to say any of this is really interesting as far as wiring is wiring. But, again, just a quick update. I've got one cool on the floor right there. I got the other one right over there. So I gotta figure out where I'm gonna put them before I had a bracket hanging off the frame. Um, I'm probably gonna do the same thing again. One right here, maybe one right here with the fans facing down. Um, I don't wanna overcomplicate it. So, and I like to use pre-existing holes to tighten all that stuff down. But I, don't, I don't really 
care to journal in the frame. Some people care, some people don't. I care. So, again, just a quick update. I'm going to lay these trans coolers side by side. Get that stuff straightened out. I just got a little bit of more wiring to wrap up. I was putting everything in these heavy clamps. Um, I still got to get that stuff squared up. And at some point, we're going to relocate the shocks too straight up and down. Because right now, I've got them staggered just like the factory. You can see right there. I'll hook the one to ramp this uh Maybe the wiring over but you know it's getting there a little bit at a time it's just super time consuming not real hard but just time consuming so yeah let me get after it i want to show you guys this real quick check it out ready key on power up the dash so i did notice i'm gonna reposition it reposition excuse me the dash it's a little bit low as you can tell it's kind of chopping off the bottom so it, it does have some room up here so you know that's that's you know big deal we talked about that anyway but got the dash rolling for the most part the wiring's wrapped up we'll get under here and i'll show you real quick what i got going on not a hot mess like it used to be still is still isn't so i got our main power cables all clamped up i did leave a bunch of extra this is the four gauge to the uh that solid state relay block and the reason why i left extra is at some point i may or may not move that battery up on top of the bed but it's kind of hard to tell it kind of looks like cluster but i assure you it isn't compared to what it was before everything's zip tied up i still have to mount trans coolers run line forward put fuel tank back in but the wiring is about 95 percent done at this point i did order some stuff off of amazon i'll show you when it shows up it's like a, a relay block and some fuses and stuff but uh we're getting there we're getting there we're doing pretty good let me go up top here real quick and we'll look at the laptop so i went in and had to go back there we'll log in real quick come up to the box okay so i'm sure i talked about it but i did get rid of that temperature and pressure sensor wherever it's at right here and that was for the coolant so now i've got a pressure sensor that's 0 25 from low dollar which is right there and from motion i ordered one of their uh rife temperature sensors which that little guy is down there if it'll focus let's see if we can get it to focus on it there we go so he's right there uh that coolant pressure i'm sorry coolant temperature is super important especially with some of these modifiers in this software so that's why i opted to do that but i went in the software i got all that stuff fired up um i do have to go back through here and change some stuff some of these modifiers for the start where is it under injector startup enrichment so it was because it was zero to 500 before now it's zero to 300 so i gotta go and mo modify this one the after start hold a uh, little bit of the enrichment maybe even some of the decay but that's no big deal i'm really excited about this i really like the way that dash turned out i'm gonna have to spend some time going in there I'm pretty sure I can put a wireless mouse on it too. It might be easier to modify the thing or, or change it to like my likings. I might start out with this background and we'll modify it to suit what I need. Um, another thing too is GPS module. I didn't know if I talked about that or not, but I do have that hooked up as well. I just ran it down through the channel of the truck. And if you look down in here, turn some light on real quick. There's a plug right there. That plug runs through there, hits the back of that dash. But, so I'm going to end this one off here. Um, thanks for watching. Next video, we're going to mount that cooler. The other cooler fuel tank should go back in. Again, we're, you know, 98% there. Appreciate you guys watching as normal. I know it can be kind of boring. It seems like it's been the never-ending wiring. So, hopefully, we'll have this thing going Maybe next weekend. We'll see. Thanks. See ya.